I promise if you buy me this one thing, I'll never ask for anything else ever again. Please, please, please. How many have heard that hollow oath from a little one? How many can remember being that child? I do. Pretty much every time I saw Reese's peanut butter cup. My parents learned quickly that the first one was not going to be my last one. And there's a similar request that many of us Christians have. It goes like this. God, I promise if you answer this one thing, I'll never ask for anything else again. Please, God, please. Does anyone remember praying that hollow oath? I do. The truth is, God knows better, and deep down, so do we. Even if our prayers are answered, like candy, it's never our last. We crave more. We are never satisfied. I'm not trying to make you feel bad about yourself. I challenge you to allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart this day. It's really human nature to want more. We come into this world whining about all of our needs. We're hungry. We're tired. We're dirty. We're just needy little beings, aren't we? It doesn't go away just because we learn new ways to communicate our needs. Everyone listening here is needy in their own way. Don't start looking at each other. <laughs> Seriously, though, in reading from the Old Testament, we don't have Jesus' words to soften this message. Ecclesiastes is a book about living life and learning from it. King Solomon, who is believed to be the writer here, was a seeker on a quest for the meaning and purpose of life. Many of us have been on similar quests. A friend of mine asked the question, what is the meaning of life? And I gave some random answers at the time. And she responded, the meaning of life is to put meaning in your life. It's a good one. You can use it. <laughs> King Solomon had everything he could ever want, and yet, still, he was not satisfied. Often referring to death as the equalizer of men. Our scripture today is full of questions in search of answers and statements about lessons learned. Solomon is like a reflection of our plea. God, if you answer this one thing, I promise I'll never ask for anything ever again. Please, God. Please. And yet, Solomon continued asking. 
we continue to ask. And God is gracious. He knows us. He knows even when we make those promises that we can't keep them because we will need him again. It's a good thing he knows that. In reference to our scripture from Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verses 7 through 12, I want to share the translation from the New Living Translation. This brings a little more clarity to Solomon's complex words. All people spend their lives scratching for food, but they never seem to have enough. So are wise people really better off than fools? Do poor people gain anything from being wise and knowing how to act in front of others? Enjoy what you have, rather than desiring what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless, like chasing the wind. Everything has already been decided. It was known long ago what each person would be. So there's no use arguing with God about your destiny. The more words you speak, the less they mean. So what good are they? And probably the heaviest section of our reading. For who knows what is good for anyone in life? In the few days of his futile life, he spends like a shadow. Who can tell anyone what will happen after him under the sun? Whoo! There's some heavy stuff there, Eeyore. <laughs> like the little donkey. <laughs> yeah. He was always so sad. Part of our desire comes from our perspective of how others live. We look down on ourselves, if they have a better job, house, car, family, body. We put ourselves above them if we feel they have less money or status or image. But it's all a waste of time. And many people throughout history have learned this about life. Author Edith Schaefer said, It is so important not to waste what is precious by spending all one's time complaining over what one does not have. Rapper Andy Minio says this in his song, Neverland. I know we own things we don't need to impress people we don't know. Then we go broke trying to look rich. I can't do it. I just won't. William Shakespeare said, Have more than you show and speak less than you know. Eleanor Roosevelt said no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. In the New Testament, Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. 
the reality is God can satisfy our cravings. He designed us that way. He is a jealous God, and he loves us just as we are. He loves my wife Krista just as she is. So do I. She was with me when I found the inspiration for this sermon. It came from a daily devotional called The One Year Walk with God by Chris Tigreen. It's amazing. He has a way with words that cause me to challenge my faith in biblical and personal ways. And so often, it feels like the devotions for the day were written specifically for me. This specific devotion is called Holy Satisfaction. And like she does when she hears the word satisfied, Krista started singing Hamilton. There's a song in Hamilton called Satisfied. It goes, I will never be satisfied. You will never be satisfied. And it really got me thinking. That's so true. If you've seen the musical or if you know your history, you know Alexander Hamilton did a lot of really great things for our country. And yet, he was never satisfied, no matter, no matter how many great things he did. He always felt like he had to prove his worth, his intelligence, his bravery. His wife, Eliza, consistently pleaded with him. Just being alive and being home with your family is enough. She pleaded that would be enough. But Alexander craved more, to the point where it led him to a duel that ultimately ended his life before he even turned 50. And then, talking further about this sermon topic, Krista brought up another song from the movie The Greatest Showman, called Never Enough. And this is normally a love song, but if you take one word and change it, it can change the entire meaning. Changing the word darling to the word Jesus causes a reflection of the whole that is left when Jesus is not a part of our life. All the shine of a thousand spotlights, all the stars we steal from the night sky would never be enough. Towers of gold are still too little. These hands could hold the world, but it'll never be Enough. Never. For me. Only God can fill a God-sized hole. So, is candy satisfying? Yeah. It's about to be. I'm finally going to eat the Reese's. <laughs> It'll be satisfying for a moment, but eventually my craving will return. And if you're like me, my sweet tooth can be very persuasive. But that doesn't mean I'm defined by it. We are not what we want. We are what we truly need. And that 
we already have. You guessed it. Jesus is enough. John 6.35 says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Though he thought life was futile for a man, King Solomon knew that trusting God was the most important thing. It was the only thing that mattered. Rich, poor, young, old, black, white, Republican, Democrat, American, Chinese, human, and beast. One day, we will all come before God's judgment. What matters in the few days prior is that we choose Jesus to fill every need. Only he truly satisfies. <laughs>